Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hi. the Hi. How's it going, Robert? Hey, Art. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. good. It's been a long day. Yeah. I'm tired, but it's good. Yeah, no kidding. It's felt like a very long one day. But now we get um, to hang out and just sit and paint and do stuff. I know. I really I look forward to these Mondays. I'm yeah. glad that we get to do this and to, to catch up and hang out. Hope everyone else is having a great day and had a really nice, uh, relaxing weekend. Uh, so today we are going to paint this uh, really fun Hogwarts uh, landscape, like on the way to Hogwarts. I don't know if you guys can see in the in the little corner up there on the top left. There is right there. There's the Weasley's car flying on the way to because they're late. Oops. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hey gang, my name is Robert. If you haven't joined us before, and this is Perception Paints, I'm going to guide you step by step through this painting so that you can create it yourself. Um, oh yeah, there it is. I oh, love that. That's it. So good. I love Harry Potter. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. Um, so yeah, but before we get started, let's go through materials and make sure we, we have what we need. So first off, I've got a uh, canvas. I'm using a 16 by 20 inch canvas uh, horizontally, but you can use uh, any size or shape canvas that you have available to you. You can also use paper or cardboard or anything you have available. You can also do this digitally if you have a iPad or a Surface Pro, or if you want to do it on a computer with Photoshop, feel free. Steps are the same, just the materials are a little bit different. It's all going to be built out the same way. So I've got my paint surface here. You will want a cup of water. Here's my cup of water. Ta-da. This is to wash off the brushes to make sure we don't get any paint mixing that we don't want to happen. And then you will also want a uh, glass of something to drink. I've always got water just to keep hydrated, especially with all these lights on. But hi, MJO. Hello, hello. Uh, but feel free, grab, grab a drink, grab a cocktail, grab a glass of wine. I always joke, um, the more you've had to drink, the better your painting's going to be. So <laughs> at least for tonight while you're doing it. Uh, Terrence Stark, hey there. Uh, so I've got something to drink. Uh, oh, I wish Emma Watson was watching. Can you imagine Reed H. Cooper? I would love that. I love Emma Watson. Uh, so next you will want a towel. I've got a reusable towel here that I just wash when I'm done. That's why it's all kind of dingy and gross looking. But if you have a paper towel or a napkin, that'll do the same thing. You want to make sure that you have a towel handy to make sure you don't have too much water on your paintbrush before you apply the paintbrush to the canvas. The reason you don't want uh, too much water on your brush is because if you do, especially with acrylic paints, and you apply that wet paintbrush to the canvas, the water will drip down the canvas and rip the paint off. So get in the habit after you've washed off your brushes, go ahead and dab it dry with your towel, and then paint as you normally would after getting the, the paint. Um, Terrence Stark says, I love you, Emma Watson. What else is she going to do with free time? You know. I don't know. I think about that sometimes. Like when actors aren't acting, what are they doing? I want them to make more things for me to enjoy. <laughs> Terrence, oh yeah. You know, if anyone could learn magic, it would be Emma Watson pretending to be Hermione, learning how to actually do magic. I would pay to watch a magic show starring Emma Watson. No, like no question, I would totally do that. Like if she was, I mean, she wouldn't even have to be in character but I would love it if she were in character, like pretending to be Hermione Granger doing magic like a real magician. I would love that. That would be so cool. It's a good idea. Warner Brothers, if you're listening, make them do real magic for me. Can you imagine like going to Vegas to see the Harry Potter magic show starring the actors? Like this is Harry Potter and Harry Potter is doing magic for you. Like, yes, I would do that. I would go see that every single day. Um, okay, so towels. <laughs> Next up, you'll want brushes. I'm using three brushes today. I usually use three brushes, but uh, I have a large, a medium, and a small brush. My large brush is a one inch flat brush. You can see it's got that flat top, and then when you turn it to the side, it's got that thin edge on there. My medium sized brush is a half inch flat brush, also flat top inside as well. And then my small brush for details is a number two round brush. 
But as long as you have a large, medium, and a small brush, you're good to go. They don't have to be the exact same brushes that I've got here. Next up is paint. Is that now? If you take a look at this, oh, oh, oh sorry, uh, is that music volume okay? No, it's great. Okay, okay. I good. didn't realize you were back. <laughs> sorry, I just came back real quick. <laughs> it scared me. Uh, no, it's all good. Art will be back. I'll be back. He's making dinner. Mm. Um, okay, so paint. Take a look at the sample over here. Um, so we're going to be using uh, quite a few colors, but we're going to be muting a lot of it with white uh, to kind of like blend it out and get that nice kind of ethereal look. So I'll show you what colors we'll be using today. We will be using, again, quite a bit of white and some black. So make sure you've got at least a standard white and a standard black to use. And then next up, you will want uh, some greens. Now, I've got three greens that I'll be using, essentially a, a light, a medium, and a dark green. If you've only got one green, you can go ahead and use that one green. That will be fine. Um, and I'll show you, we'll just use different variants of light and dark. You'll also want uh, a nice blue tone. I'm using a cerulean blue here. And then I've got a, a little bit of a purple. You know, if you don't have purple, that's okay. You can also use like a, a dark blue. Um, I'm using a, a light violet. It's just a light purple. But um, why is the ruler clipping the painting? Oh, <laughs> like behind it. I don't know, because that's where the ruler goes. Um, and I'm also using a gray. I just have a standard gray. Now, if, Again, if you don't have gray, you can mix up some black and white, and that'll clear up the gray for you, too. All right. And then just a quick question. How's the video quality? I know sometimes we have some issues. It's looking a little choppy on my end, and I just want to make sure that it's not completely awful when you guys are watching on that end. I tried to swap out the internet stuff uh, last week, and it seemed uh, to be better, but... You're a little low res, but you're not choppy. It doesn't fit. Okay. I don't know why it's so low today. It looks sad. It does look a little <laughs> sad. <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, well, hopefully it'll get better. I, I just refreshed everything beforehand too. You want to just refresh your call? Just refresh your browser? See if that just reconnect the call? Yeah, let's take a look. That's an easy off. Look, there it is. That helps. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, well, I appreciate it, Reed, for the not completely awful. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Oh, also, uh, Reed had mentioned um, he was wondering why the ruler is clipping through the painting in the, back <laughs> in the background. It's just how it lays out. The ruler is actually out. holding up the painting. It's taped to the ruler. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we've got our paints. Uh, and... Yeah, that's it for supplies. Before we get started, let's do a quick little te uh, toast. Make sure we start it off the right way. Um, oh, my <laughs> says, resist. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. It didn't fix the painting. All right. So <laughs> we'll drink and we'll paint the best that we can. And if it don't turn out right, who gives a damn? Yeah. Cheers. Let's go. <clears throat> yes, Ryan, thank you. Um, please join us on the Discord. You can check us out at Perception Paints on the Discord and also Perception Paints Share, where you can uh, hook up a little video feed of your progress. And then I can take a look at it as we're going. If you want to show me as we're working through, if you have any questions as we're doing it, happy to jump in there and help you out. All right, so let's get started. We're going to start with our backgrounds first. This is going to be a very uh, white, beigey, heavy, um, not beige, I'm sorry white, light, bluish, purplish background that we're working with. So it's going to be mostly white paint with some hints of blue in there. And we're going to start with our water first. So I'm going to take some white paint right off the bat. It would help if that white was opened. And that's not, of course. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to start with a nice dollop of white paint. 
Starting with the half, halfway point of my canvas, if I were to split my canvas in half horizontally, adding on some white paint. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that look great? Um, you know, Reed, give it a try. You never know. This actually looks a lot more um, difficult than it actually is. It's just big sweeping fields of landscape. So in that white, I'm going to take a little dab of blue, my light uh, cerulean blue, and I'm blending that right into the white. I want this to be nice and pale. I can add a little bit more. And I like to mix these colors on the canvas. That way you get this really nice variance of some white and some blue and some light blue. I really like building my colors on the canvas. <clears throat> um, hi, Connie. We just started. Plenty of time to catch up. We're just doing our backgrounds. It's a combination of mostly white and little touches of blue to create um, our water first. We're gonna paint a layer on top of this in just a moment. But again, mostly white and then adding some blue in there. When you're doing your backgrounds too, you can always add a little bit of water to your brush to just take a tap of water. You don't want too much, but that helps to catch the paint and fill in the canvas a little bit if it's a little scratchy. It's maybe not filling in the color just the way you'd like. Okay. Get a little tap of water and just blend that in. And when you're blending plate, sorry, when you're blending paint, I like to use big, broad, horizontal strokes, or vertical, if the situation calls for it, but the longer and broader the stroke, the better your blend is going to be if you just keep working over that paint. It just gets nicer and nicer. And again, you're gonna have areas that look a little more white, areas that look a little more blue. That's okay, we want that variance in there. So that it actually looks like water and not just a flat field of blue. And I might add a little bit more of that blue in there. Um, let's see. So what should I be doing here? Um, well, go ahead, if you're you're doing this digitally or, or you're, yeah, you're doing this digitally, right? Because you don't have the canvas with you, Reed. Um, <clears throat> I would take a little bit of blue, tap it on there, on your screen and then take some white on top of it and see if you can blend those back and forth. Change the opacity to both of them to about um, anywhere from 25 to 50% and just play with the blending. How's everyone doing so far? It's gone. Okay. <laughs> it's blue. Um, yeah, if you have any questions as we go through, feel free to drop them in the chat. Or uh, again, if you want to take a look, if you want me to take a look, um, 
you can pop it up on the Discord um, at Perception Paint Share, and I can take a look at it there too. <clears throat> Okay, so next what we're going to do is the sky. So the sky up here is gonna be even more white. It's gonna be lighter than what we have down here with the water. Um, and it also has a little bit of a purple tinge to it. So start with a lot more white, and then um, you'll be adding in a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple here and there. Um, just keep it very, very light. It's going to be mostly white paint. So we're going to start with that white base. And just fill in a majority of that. I want to keep this line here at my horizon where the sky meets the water. I want to keep that nice and sharp. There's some white paint. I'm gonna take a little bit of water. Blend that into the canvas a little bit. And I'm working fairly quickly on these backgrounds too because I don't want the colors to dry too quickly. I do want them to stick around for a bit. <clears throat> so Corey, uh, the top is going to be, well, the bottom is blue. The bottom is that mixture of mostly white with blue in it. The top is going to be white, mostly white, with a little bit of blue in it as well, but it's going to be far less blue. It's going to, this is going to be very, very light and cloudy. It'll be a combination of blue, a little bit of purple in there, which you can see I'm taking a very small amount on my brush. And I'm actually going to find areas on that white to pop in some blue. Just a really, really light space up there. I'm not covering the whole canvas or the whole area like I did down here. I'm just finding little pockets on this top area. To create some light blue cloudy bits. I'll do one more over here with the blue. Feel free to let it go off the edge too. And if you find that it's getting a little too dark, you can add a bit more water on there and a bit more white paint. Take some white. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, I'm just working that white right on top of it. We're creating this nice kind of hazy, cloudy sky. And to be honest, if you don't cover your whole canvas with paint up here on the top part, that's fine too. You can leave some of the area since it's a white canvas. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna take some water and kind of wash it out of it. Be careful when you've got water on there. You don't want to have too much. And again, I'm going to take just a tiny, tiny tap of purple. I have a light purple, a light violet. And where I see some of my darkest clouds, I'm just gonna add a little tap of purple in there. Really, really light. And just blend that in. This is just for color variance so that it's not just solid blue, solid blue throughout. We want it to be nice and different as we go. We'll pop it here. And then again, blend that in nice and quick before it has a chance to dry. Mm -hmm. 
And you can make that even cloudier too if you want. It's totally up to you. Just so you know, uh, Barbara, you're still coming in a bit pixely, kind of low res. Mm. It's been going up and down throughout. That's weird. All right. Let me take a look. We're at uh, 320 by 180 resolution. 320, 180? Yeah. Is what you're getting from me? Yeah. Okay, so we've got that nice purpley hazy background. As you're working on that gang, I'm gonna see what I can do about uh, the video quality that's coming in on my end. I'm gonna take a look at it real quick. Okay. So I will be right back, but please continue on. I'll be right here. I'll talk to everybody. Okay, so. Hopefully Rob will be back in here in a little bit. Oh, now he's super clear. What just happened? <clears throat> that was fun. What am I getting now? 540. See if you can get Ryan in here. The Discord, you guys want to hang out at the Discord. That's also where you guys can show your stuff. I just got to find it. There it is. I just gave everything reset, so we'll see. Okay. Are it we was there? weird. Right when you left, it, it shot up for a little bit. I I refreshed the VMix call again. Oh, okay. That's what happened. Okay. Um, yeah, it's weird because it seems like it does well when I refresh it and then just, and just goes down, crashing back down again. But we'll see. I just refreshed everything. Uh, Jared's not doing anything downstairs either. Usually he's like streaming TV as we're going and it's fine. It may just be Monday. Yeah, yeah. it might just be that. Hi, Danny. Okay, so I got our Discord set up. Here's Ryan. 
working hard. And if looking any, good. Yeah, if anybody else shares their video on the Discord, I will be able to put it in. Right now, I only have yeah, Ryan showing up. All right, so now we're going to work on our mountains. They're going to float in here on the uh, on the back left. These are still going to sit above our horizon line there. And these are going to be a little more purple in tone. So you can still use your large brush. I'm going to use my light violet. Again, still mostly white. And just start with a nice slope. I would say if you were to split this top half into half again, that's where we're gonna go, right about there. And you're gonna meet just over halfway. So just slope this down. Right about there. And again, mostly white. We're doing two of these hazy mountains in the background. So the first one is going to be a little bit lighter. Start with that white base. I got Danny in the Discord as well. Who's that? That's Danny. Danny's? Yeah. Nice. And we also have Connie. Yay, hi Connie. So you can see I'm adding that purple right into the white and I'm blending that in there. Creating this nice hazy purple mountain in the background. Flat bottom right up against the horizon line there. another mountain right on top of it, a little bit darker. Let's see, let's go right about here. We're gonna overlap it a bit. So you can see this one's a bit darker than the one that we just painted. And I'm not gonna fill it all the way in because we're gonna paint another mountain right on top of it. So I don't need to fill all this over here. Just enough. And I'm actually gonna go a little blue on this mountain that I just did, just a tap of blue. So it's not quite so purpley. And I'm also going to mix in a little bit of white just to lighten it up a little bit more. I don't want this to be too saturated.
even better. Hi, Hello, Karen. Amber. Amber's here too. She's trying to her Hi, right Amber. Now. I was hoping Amber would join us today. We have a lot of people in the Discord today. Nice. I love it. And I'm falling way behind. <laughs> I'm also going to put one more mountain back here. Just a nice light one. It'll be probably in the same tone as this first one that we did over here. Just this nice light kind of purpley blue. So I'm going to start with the white paint first. And I'm going to paint it a little bit lower. Have we talked about Ryan's fancy um, easel that I bought him for himself? No, I don't think so. Yeah, Did he, he just get a new easel? Uh, a couple weeks ago. He's been using it for a few weeks, but he got himself oh, a nice. fancy easel. And, oh, yeah, and, uh, and um, I forget what they're called. <laughs> Those things you put paint on. Um, palette. A palette. Yeah. Awesome. That looks great. I, lo I do love a nice wooden easel. These little guys, these metal ones from Michaels, they're great because they're 20 bucks or so, but yeah. it it's falling apart. <laughs> I've gone through way too many of them. All right, huh? Who is Karen S? Because she says, it's so weird to be called Karen. That's not how y'all know me. How do we know you then? It's this YouTube thing, getting people's real names on YouTube is weird. <laughs> or different names on YouTube. Like, Reed H. Cooper makes sense because it's Reed H. Harris Hooper. Cooper. Oh. Art Vega is because I'm Art Vega everywhere. I try Ugh. to keep mine the same. Except for Clubhouse. Have you joined Clubhouse yet? It's that audio thing. No, I haven't. So Danny sent me an invitation like over a week ago and I didn't reply to it because I forgot. Oh, no. And then like so a week later, I finally did it. And the guy who took Art Vega had done it two days prior. So if I just done it when Danny sent me an invite. Of course. I would have. Uh, no, it's rolling around the office right now. Um, I, haven't, I haven't jumped on it yet. This is Boo, get on. I don't know what to do with it yet. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, the most recent it. mountain is here on the right hand side. Over here. Hey, good boy. Art, I'm so disappointed. I keep refreshing it, and mm -hmm. it's like, yay! And then I don't know what's happening. Um, yeah, like it's not. I mean, at least you're not chopping, so at least you know every once in a while we refresh, and then we can see everything fine. And I know because we can you know, hear I'm you fine. That's good. I'm wondering if maybe you want to just zoom in on the picture itself. Mm -hmm. I can do that. That way, since um, since it's maybe not coming in so great, we can just. Yeah. Let me center that. Nope, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> Thank you. I want to make sure that you guys are able to see this, even if I'm looking a little chunky. There we go. Dead boy, I've been having that all day today, too. No worries. Okay, so yeah, Corey, the most recent mountain, the third mountain is right there on that edge. It's very, very light, kind of faint in the background. I gave a little purplish blue hue. I wish I had I had the, the ability to refresh your, you know, your thing. It's really weird. Um, even when I refresh it, would it do anything if I stopped it and came back in? I don't know. All right, let's try it. I'll be right back, gang. Uh, yeah, it's weird that we're having these issues. It's, it was great last week. I want to fix this though because I think I broke this. Reset. 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 Reset.
back. I'm here. All right, let's see how that looks. You look okay right now. Karen says I don't look chunky. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and it's your first time watching. Oh. Thank you for joining us. Oh. I'm Robert, by the way. Nice to nah, meet you. I'm Art. <laughs> Art, you should know my real name. Shame on you. <laughs> Who's Ke okay? Now I know. So this is a real person, not a real person, but a real life person. <laughs> I have no idea. All right. So now what we're <laughs> going to do, while Art figures out who this real life person is. <laughs> Um, we are going to paint Hogwarts. Oh gosh, it went chunky again. I don't know. Sad face. Oh, I was gonna zoom in. Beep you. Um. <laughs> hmm. Karen is Karen's real life name. You know, I have an idea. Yeah. What's that? Um, I'm going to knock off YouTube. Okay. And I'll have you take a look at the chat. Okay. And maybe that'll help us out. At least the feed bit. coming to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so that my computer's not working so hard. <laughs> okay. Boy. So if you if you need anything, let us know in the chat. Yeah. Art will let me know. Dead Boy says, come for the art and stay to watch Confused Art. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to paint um, Hogwarts. We're actually going to paint the castle over here on this top uh, right corner. Oh, oh, I have a thing. Yes. You can pop out the chat so you have just the chat and not the video. Have we talked about this? Uh, on YouTube itself? Yeah. So if you open up the no. YouTube video again. Okay. Uh, on the, on the top of the chat, there's three little dots. By the way, I think that helped because you're coming in clear. Okay, good. Pop out chat. Pop out chat. Okay, and then I'll close the YouTube window. Great, okay. All right, let's play that for a little bit and see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. Karen says clue number two. I have I have mailed the studio something for your girl. Uh. <laughs> okay, so something for Amber from Karen. I'm gonna figure this out. Art and art with Robert and art doing art. <laughs> So good. All right, so now I'm gonna paint the castle. Oh. I'm using my medium-sized brush. And I'm going to take, uh, hi, Jason. I'm gonna take a little bit of gray and just kind of sketch out how I want my castle. So don't worry if you don't have the tiers and the turrets and everything exactly right. If you want, you can use this as a reference up there on the top right. Um, all the castles are going to look a little bit different, but they're also going to look fairly similar. We know that this is going to be Hogwarts, so it's all going to have that same yeah. feel to it. Um, so don't get too hung up on it. If I've got six of them and you happen to have seven, oh no, uh, there's an extra classroom. Like, you'll be fine. It's okay. Yeah, you can be Bob Ports. <laughs> That's right. So I'm just going to start here. It's Sarah White. That's who Karen is. Sarah White so on name... Twitch. Her name isn't Karen, but Sarah. It's Sarah White. Oh. Well, hi, Sarah I'm pretty White. Sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so I'm going to paint up these turrets and just a couple towers. Start small. You can always add more. You can always make them a little bit larger. Um, I actually painted a little bit higher above my mountain here. That's okay. You can always add another mountain in the background too. I misjudged where I was placing that. 
This is the Hogwarts in Japan, not the Hogwarts at Hollywood or Florida. Right, with the giant lake and everything. The giant lake, yeah. Yeah. Just start with the basic shapes first. And then you can add in the details afterward. I did try guessing, Karen. You're Sarah White. Sarah says, sorry, I had to refresh. Not sure if I tried guessing. <laughs> So you guys can see I'm painting each each little, little building kind of individually just to sketch it out for shape. And then we're gonna fill in the details after the fact. So if there's UK um, magic schools and America magic schools, I want to know what the Mexico magic schools are. That would be kind of cool. I, I um, be like yeah, I'm curious myself. Inside an Aztec pyramid in the middle of the jungle. Yes. That'd be so cool. That would be awesome. It would look like um, Jaguar at Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> it would just... <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> I used to love that ride. I still love I did too. I still do. It's so it's good. A, it's a great It's so shoot. stupid and slow and I love it. Yeah. I um I always loved it as a kid just because you got such cool views of the park. Like before they built um Silver Bullet, it was yeah. just a really cool like um what do you call it? It's, a little it's just a nice way to, yeah, it was a nice way to get a cool tour of like the front area of the park and Ghost Town and mm -hmm. Fiesta Village. Um, and then they, they dropped Silver Bullet in there. And now Knott's Berry Farm just looks like a twisted mess of metal. Like, I, I don't even know. I hate how you walk in the front door and there's just the front gate and there's just a, a foot for like a roller coaster there. It's just like, it's just it, weird. there's no theming whatsoever. No. They just slammed it all right there. Also, it's miss, so sad. Remember the boxcar racers? Those I was were my just favorite. thinking about those yesterday. I loved those. Um, did you know that the designer of the soapbox racers was 22 years old when he designed that ride? No way. 22 years old. And he's wow. just like, I just wanted it to, to be like a living cartoon. Like, uh, yeah, amazing. <laughs> I, I a, loved that ride. I did too. Loved it. It was one of my, is my favorite ride at Knott's Ride Farm. Also had a yeah. full breakdown outside of that ride when I was like 10. Because I <laughs> Why? because I had this hat that I loved and I accidentally left it on the ride. Oh no. And, and I I lost it and never saw it again. But like I I had a melt down. Little oh. 10 year old me was just like so just not okay with the fact that I lost this hat. Art, your poor hat. Yeah. <laughs> it was sad. <laughs> um I remember Boomerang was my first uh, roller coaster with like an inversion. Oh, I I, I, I never rode Boomerang. I was like, no, I'm good. Boomerang Thanks, everybody. Great. It was it was really good. Um, as I got older, I realized I couldn't ride it because I just didn't fit in it right. <laughs> after, after I turned, after I got like six, I want to say like six one, six two. I realized yeah. a lot of the roller coasters I loved as a kid, I could not ride anymore. <laughs> just didn't fit. And just so everybody birth. knows, Knott's Berry Farm is, is a, a small theme park here in California. It's, I think it's like America's first theme it's park. Theme park, I think so, yeah. And it's where they yeah. invented the boysenberry? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a berry farm. It started out as a berry farm here. And it yeah. got a couple rides and a couple things, and it's a full-on, it's a little brother to Disneyland. It's literally down the street from Disneyland. 
So if you ever come to, it's cool. Yeah, if you ever come down to Disneyland, you come to California, do, do visit Knott's Berry Farm. It's like a cute yeah. little park. I've always loved it. Their Halloween stuff is real fun. Oh yeah, they were one of the first parks to do uh, a haunted, yeah, haunted maze like Halloween mm -hmm. haunt thing. They do a similar thing like Hollywood Studios does. But they, Hollywood Studios doesn't have the zombie shooting thing, which is pretty cool. No, and I haven't done that yet. It's really fun. I got lucky that um, we had people working as ma managers. Of this. I think Andrew Lockerbie was working there, and then... Did you meet Byron Neeson? I don't know if you met Byron. Anyways, one of them, too. I think so. They um, they, they just frontlined us, and because um, the line was crazy to, to do that thing. And we got to do the zombie yeah. hunting thing. Should I do LSD first, as is the bridge guru? <laughs> um, I, I mean, if you want, it's not it's not required for the ultimate zombie experience. Maybe. No, you literally like you have these like big. It's it's like laser tag, but with zombies, and zombies chase you down areas. It's really cool. It always sounded really cool. I just I, the lines were always so long. Even yeah, when I would get like front line pass, it just never worked out. No, y yeah. It's it's not worth waiting two or three hours because you're only there for like five or six hours. It's not worth waiting half your time there. But it is real no. cool if you can do it. Um, Jason says I really enjoyed Shade Versity's critic or critique of Hogwarts Castle design from a medieval realism point of view. Oh, that would be really interesting. Oh, I wouldn't mind checking check that out either. Um, Karen S says no. That would be Miss Despair. Who accidentally killed someone with her? Um, I think we missed something um, above. <laughs> oh, I did miss something. You are Miss Scarlet in the Twitch chat with the lead pipe. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I see what's going on here now. Oh my gosh. Oh man, the model. Have you seen pictures of the model for the Hogwarts Castle for the movie? Mm -hmm. Like it's, the filming model. The it film. It's be It's a. It's huge. Um, and they have it at at at, at the at the the hog the. Harry Potter experience, like behind the scenes thing they have in in, in the UK, um, uh, oh, outside, yeah. outside of London. It's the last thing you see on your way out, and it's this. You walk around it. It's this huge model. It's beautiful. That's so uh, it's cool. probably I... like 20, 30 feet across. Dang. It's huge, but it's beautiful. That's like they, a whale. Yeah, that's where they got all the, the, the all the sweepy shots of they they took the picture uh, did all the shots of this model for all the movies. Isn't it sad that I just assumed that was CGI? Like the whole thing, just some the, model that they created. Yeah, they built the model and they did all the shots for it. And it's really cool. And they mixed in with CGI and stuff, but they they ca captured a real model. Why well, it looks good? That's amazing. British Cooper says, "I'm seriously coming art when museum stuff and stuff open reopen." Yeah, do come yeah. Out. It's fun. Um, Knott's Berry Farm is it's different now because of the roller coasters. The roller coasters have kind of taken over a little bit, so it yeah. doesn't quite have the charm that it used to. You used to walk in and it felt like an old timey theme park so that mm -hmm. just to the left was a ghost town it's still there and it's a full recreation of like an old western ghost town and they have um what is it called ghost town live or ghost town alive yeah yeah um yeah you know, the ghost town is really cool fiesta village is this old school like mexican themed village um they used to have a roaring 20s area in the back that was really fun and just kind of <laughs> now it just feels like a roller coaster park. It's it's akin to Six Flags for the most part. But it's got but a little left, as... leftovers of the kids stuff. Yeah, it's got you, you got to find it or know where it's at. Like Camp Snoopy is really cute still. I remember when I saw um, what's the magician that was in in Saved by the Bell? Um, Max. Oh yeah, he, he ran the Max, whatever that guy's name was. That he used to, yeah. he, used to he used to perform there. During Halloween. Oh, at the at the birdcage, right? Yeah. Or no? Or was he at the big theater? The no, he's at the small theater. theater. At the small theater. Yeah, that little birdcage. Um, a lot of history in that theme park. Mm-hmm. It used to be OC Elvira show there. Oh, I love Elvira. That was such a good show. So good, and she disappeared forever. And then she came back, and it was just. Amazing. I yeah. mean, you go to an Elvira show knowing it's not going to be an amazing show. It's going to be cheesy and stupid. Um, but it's so fun. But it's like amazing in the cheesy and stupid way. And you leave so yeah. happy because she's so uh, good. I'm, yeah. I mean, she's in her, like, she's in her hundreds now. And <laughs> At least. 
Yeah, and she still looks like she's in her thirties. Yeah, and she's got yeah. she's got tits out to forever, and she's so funny and stupid. Age group says real Cassandra. Yeah, real Cassandra. She did yeah, her last it's show. Actually her. Two years ago, I think it was a lot. Two or three years ago was her last show, and she used to do a show during the Halloween thing. You, um, she did a whole month's worth of shows there, and it was yeah. I mean, literally, uh, not spray farm spread the entire budget on her. She's sixty. Yeah, she and I saw her last year that she was there. She's like two or three years ago, and and it was yeah. so good. We did too. It was amazing. Like just witnessing that her her ridiculousness, and she's so nice. Right. She's like, like uh, I met her at a red carpet. I interviewed her. Well, I ran the camera while she was interviewed for the, uh, the red carpet event, and she was like, just sweet and nice. She's so sweet. I think she's she's one of those few celebrities that knows that her fame comes from the fans. Yeah. And she really she really embraces everyone. Like I did a meet and greet with her once, and I was just like, ah, oh, so sweet. And you wouldn't know it from like her. Um, Spooky persona, yeah. but yeah. I'm gonna check in on um, Danny here for a second. Yeah. Oh, Danny's doing okay. <laughs> nice. That's good. Uh, oh wait, I'm gonna leave that up and let's check in on Ryan. What's Ryan doing? Okay, Ryan's doing good too. Connie, excellent as always. Where's Amber? Amber's over here. Amber's over Cute. here. Cute. She zoomed in. I love it. Amber's holding like six different things. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand how this is working out. Somehow, somehow she's making it happen. I think she's holding the phone with you on her left hand, and her iPad is there. Yeah. Oh, she's. What is she? She's on the wow. app store for some reason. She's got. The, she's got the camera in her mouth. I think. Um, I don't know how that's working out. Oh, Amber. <laughs> I love it. Um. Yeah, you know, as a kid, I actually, I really enjoyed going to Knott's Berry Farm almost more than going to Disneyland. Yeah. Sometimes, just because it just felt, you get a different feeling at Knott's Berry Farm. It felt like a down-home park. It's fun. I've always really liked it. Yeah, me too. I would like to uh, inform you now that Amber has another iPad now she's holding up. Uh, <laughs> because she's going to watch Bachelor on it, I think. I see her in the ABC app. Uh, I don't know why she has a, she has a fifty inch TV in front of her. I don't know why she's not watching it on that. She's um, she's challenging herself. Let's see, uh, um, Karen says she didn't see Danny's screen. There's Danny's screen. Oh, in the Discord for Danny's screen because he's sharing his. It's doing a screen share, which is different than a camera. You have to click on his click on his picture where his little window is you have to click on it and then say mm -hmm. that you want to watch or there's a different window that you have to click on for some reason yeah. screen sharing you have to activate by clicking on it Terrence Dark says I still got one of the first crushed pennies I made from knots oh yeah oh cool I used to love that it's kind of fun uh, dead boy is going to be the sheriff of ghost town <laughs> is he yeah guess so <laughs> <laughs> I love Ghost Town. It's still my favorite. And then Halloween time, the whole thing is filled with fog. Like you can't see anything. Yes. You're just walking oh, through fog. People it's jump so out at you. They try to kill so you. Good. I miss it so much. All right. So I've got my Hogwarts castle back there. It's all flat gray, but I've got like tiers and turrets and all that stuff. So now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to fill in uh, with a uh, white. This is actually called parchment, so it's kind of like a, a beigey white, but essentially just white. And I'm going to add in some highlights. So I'm taking my um, my medium-sized brush still, and I'm going to. Oh, Dead Boy says I can't stream on the TV because Mom's watching Perception Check right now. So <laughs> I'm on my phone with y'all. <laughs> nice. Oh no, your mom's okay, watching so Perception Check. Oh, uh, so Reed, for confirmation, there's no way we're making the painting that is our sample, right? Oh, no, no, no. No, don't get hung up on this at all. It's all it's all going to be very Hogwarts-esque. It's, yeah, it's just a guide. It's just Yeah, it's, just, it's always just a guide. It's Mandalorian every episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
for those of you who don't know, The Mandalorian was our best painting ever in this session. Okay, so I've got my, um, my beigey white, and I'm gonna add this highlight along this left side of the turret, and then just kind of bring it down. And if you wanna zoom in a little bit on this, So you can see I'm adding just a tiny touch of this, this white along this left eye, left side edge, and then kind of loosely stroking to the right to kind of give it a little three-dimensional look. Oops, I just tap something in there. <laughs> There's a Thestral, oh no. Okay. I'm just kind of rounding it out a little bit, giving it some dimension. Dead Boy was raised on westerns and horror with fantasy, so the idea of having a ghost town in the old west with real ghosts, it's a dream. It's, uh, Dead Boy, if you've never been to Knott's Berry Farm, really, like, ghost town is, the quintessential like what you would imagine a western town to be and you could, and it's huge and you can walk through the whole thing it's so fun and yes there is a ride called ghost rider that is easily one of the best wooden roller coasters oh it is scary as hell i yeah. do not I, like riding that ride probably a, even if it's not a wooden roller it's one of the best roller coasters no, i've ever it been is, on it's it excellent. is it is a wooden roller coaster who should not be a wooden roller coaster because it <laughs> yeah, is, that's a good way it, to put it. it goes way too fast and it yeah. just shakes you off. It's, it's scary. I don't like roller coasters, so maybe I'm biased, but it is one of the scariest rides ever because it doesn't even go I, up and down crazy. It's nothing like, mm -hmm. it's just it's the fact just that fast. it's just real fast and real rickety. Fast and rickety through a bunch of wooden scaffolding. Every time I ride it, I think I'm going to die. Um, it's wonderful. Oh, it's such yeah. a wonderful ride. I love roller coasters, and that one still terrifies me every time. Terrifying. You know, I never got to experience uh, Ghost Town Alive. Is that uh, an all year thing, or is it just like during the summer? It's just during the summer. That's probably why I, I, I you know, I still haven't done it. Danny's been working that for a few years now, and I still haven't gone. Oh my gosh, Danny would be so good at that. Um, Dino does it too, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Dino does it too, yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> Terrence Stark says, Terrence Clark says, it's the most terrifying thing ever. When I was young, I was super skinny and I was flew out of the seat. Yeah, it's a scary <laughs> ride. It shouldn't it exist. Is, it's, it's really scary. It's, it's... Yeah, it doesn't make sense the way that it's built because no. it I, feels like you're gonna die. You're, I only I wrote it once and I was good. I was good for the rest of my life. It's so good though. So again, you can see I'm just building out these little details with this highlight, kind of adding some dimension to my castle, right? putting all my highlight focus on the left and then just lightly brushing out to the right. Okay. So you add that in. And you can also see right here where the tower and like the base part of my, um, my castle building is there. I've skipped a space. So I built out the, the cone up there, and then I left this part dark. I put a stripe of the highlight underneath it, kind of like as a, as a divider uh, of the turret. And then the rest of the building here, I skipped another space. And that just helps to define some of those areas too. So you don't have to fill in everything with this highlight or shadow, but just kind of play around with it a bit. And again, you can look at the sample um, on the right as kind of a guide. Um, Danny says, yeah, it was summertime. Dino played the retired bank robber. 
<laughs> Danny was a neurotic postman. Nice, I love it. Um, you should try the rides in KC. They're freaking scary or work for me. Where's KC? Like Kansas City? Um, Dead Boy used to be the horror doorman for an apartment during Spooktober when I was younger. That's so fun. I love that. We're, um, our house is always the scary house on the street, so the kids, Jared and I, my husband, just get dressed up and intentionally terrorize the children because there's few things in this world I love more than screaming children. But I'm scared. I don't like it when they're just screaming because it has to be because I've made them feel bad about themselves. Sorry. <laughs> Last time I was at Knott's Berry Farm was when they opened, um, they had reopened the building that Kingdom of the Dinosaurs was in to be a like underwater submarine Buzz what? Lightyear type ride. I haven't been on that yet. It was okay. They, it's, they actually got rid of it already. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't get the ride. Yeah, I, I think it was only there for maybe four or five years tops. Um, and already they were having issues technically and like upkeep and things like that. So they removed it. And then when Knott's reopens, they're doing a uh, Berry Tales reboot it. Because the Berry Tales used to be there before mm. uh, Kingdom of the Dinosaurs. Okay. So now it's going to be more like Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be fun. They should have just upgraded the Kingdom of the Dinosaurs. So it was great. I know. Gosh, do you remember when that first opened up? Yep. Oh, the hype. I mean, that was the height of dinosaurs. I think either just after or just before Jurassic Park, like mm -hmm. everyone was on the dinosaur train. And it was like, and it was literally a dinosaur train. It was mm -hmm. so cool. Such a fun ride. And it was uh, the, the makeout place for the middle, middle schoolers. Yeah. <laughs> You're going back in tonight. Are you going, are you going the wrong way? <laughs> oh, I love that. It's classic. Good night, Karen. Karen's hopping off. Karen, bye. Did we figure out who she was? Yeah, Sarah White. I was oh, right. Oh, it is Sarah White. Okay. Yeah. Take that, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it out. Um, Terrence, yes, KC is Kansas City. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just wasn't sure if that's what we're talking about. I, I actually haven't been to very many theme parks outside of California and Florida, unfortunately. Because mm -hmm. um, I love them. I want to go to Cedar Point one of these days. But I love roller coasters. That's, that's like the place to go. Uh, Necrofilm says Knott's has been open during COVID for Food Fest. Yeah, I saw that. I um, that still makes me anxious. I'm I'm one of the people who is very very careful with everything that's going on. Like, yeah, I don't I don't even order food. I I feel bad for all the businesses, but I, I don't. Like it sounds fun because it's like, oh, there's hardly anybody there, and there's gonna be all kinds of I food. But like, but you know what? No, I'm gonna wait. I'm not ready yet. I just don't feel safe. And I don't wait. Like I know friends who've gone full on like Disney World vacations and they're like, it's great, it's wonderful, there's no one there. And it's like, but there's a reason there's no one there. <laughs> like, because <laughs> people are dying. Oh well. Um, the Dead Boy screams are well and good when needed, but screams come in all sizes and decibels. Yeah, if it's a kid just screaming for the sake of screaming, I don't like it. If it's a kid that's screaming because I've scared the shit out of them, Bye, Karen. I read an article that in the entirety of uh, the year 2020, mm -hmm. Canada didn't have a single baby born named Karen. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good for them. Yeah, way to go, Canada. Yeah, way to go, Canada. <laughs> you did it. It's so funny. You're no longer America Junior. <laughs> right? If anything. <laughs> yeah, we're America we're Junior now. We're Canada Junior. Canada Light. <laughs> I do miss theme parks a lot though. It's been a long time since I've been. And I mean, I didn't go a lot even before, in the before times, just yeah. because um, I was so busy, but also just crowds. Like I just kind of got tired of the crowds a little bit. In my old age. How's it going doing on the castles? Pretty good. <laughs> just take your time with it. What are, you, are you laughing? What? What? I'm gonna show you where I am. Okay. Hold on, I have to make it work. You know what? Uh, Necrofilm you says. No, you can't. Oh, yeah. Let me. Says, Our household basically had COVID last year in March. Ugh. Oh, I hope that you don't get it again, and I hope that yeah, it was a light that case, was it. and it's not a not a long haul situation. My my whole family got it. Um, Oh, wow. I don't live with them, thankfully, but yeah, my mom, brother, sister, stepdad, they all got it. They're all kind of struggling with coughs and breathing and stuff. And it's just, yeah. My dad, my, my, my dad, my dad, my dad lives in Mexico. I have a stepdad here, but my dad, my father, he, um, he got it too. I haven't talked to him in a week or so. I should check on him. Like he was already like two weeks after it, like, but he was still feeling weak and not, not, not terribly great. Yeah. Um, Dead boy, I'm glad your parents got their second vaccine shot. That's good. I um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get mine, unfortunately. Graphic designers aren't high on the list. Because they can work from home. Yeah. Thankful for that. And puppeteers are way at the bottom. For some reason. <sighs> That's weird. Puppeteers should be first, you know? Yeah. You got your hands like, and everything. We're like in each other's faces. Yeah. Breathing felt on each other, like should be up there. Okay, here's mine. You ready? Yep. Art, that's beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> I gave up. You've been busy. I, I felt behind. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. You can always come back to it. I'm paying attention though. This is the most in-depth part. Um, Danny's getting all super detailed over here. Danny, yes. Nice. It's actually, it's easy once you get the hang of it. Once you understand like, oh, okay, I'm creating shadow by using highlight, then it really starts to make sense and it's it's pretty easy to, to kind of catch on to it. Well, Amber's it going into the details minute, too. Oh, she zoomed out. Yeah. She was. Once um, once I lay out some of these highlights, then I'm going to go back in and add the little taps of gray to do all the little windows and doors and stuff. I mean, each group said, art, wow, masterpiece. Best art drawing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the best one yet. Uh... Well, hopefully by the summer, most of us will have been vaccinated. I hope so. Cause really, I was I just... actually going to volunteer to one of the centers, like mm -hmm. the the um, vaccination centers, but I, I couldn't do the shifts. They wanted um, a part-time shift was Friday through Sunday from 6.45 to 5 p.m. every day. Oh, man. And I just, I couldn't do it. I work on Fridays. I work yeah. Monday through Friday, so it wouldn't work. But for those of you who are looking for work, check out, um, check your local, like, health areas and see if they have a major distribution center and they, they were paying like 18 20 dollars an hour for it it's nothing to sneeze at yeah and you might get a leftover vaccine yes i believe they do vaccinate you too yeah i know that there's um, like also you can also call certain pharmacies that are giving them out and see if there's like a spot left open because the, the vaccine yeah. goes like it goes bad after a few hours so they'll take mm -hmm. they'll they'll take anybody who can take it at that point 
yeah, check your local pharmacies to see if they have them. And then also, um, if you've got like a day where you're just kind of like chilling out and you really need to get one, you can hang out at the pharmacies too. Like at the end of the day, whatever they've got left over, they will give you because otherwise they just toss them. Um, except not in NYC, apparently. Apparently, yeah. According to Reed. Yeah, it, it's, it's different from like city it to varies. city and also pharmacy to pharmacy. It's, it's kind of on them. Yeah. You never know how. Um, because there's no like standard how for how to handle leftovers. Yeah. Um, Dead Boy says, holy cow, y'all are fantastic. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Dead Boy. The Tinkerbell was fun last week, wasn't it? I wasn't yes. sure about that one. No, it was fun. Um, but it, it turned out really cute. I have it up on my wall. I really liked it. All right, so now what I'm going to do, now that I've got my highlights on there, I'm going to take my small brush, my small round brush with the gray paint, and I'm going to go in on top of the highlights and just add in some little dabs for all of the windows. And doors that are in uh, in these buildings. Now you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to do every single one of them. In fact, I find when it comes to art uh, and with paintings and stuff, if you just do a few of them, it gives the illusion that the rest of them are there, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, a good example is like in a, you think, it happens a lot in cartoons because you think it takes so long to draw cartoons, right? So if you're looking at a cityscape and you have these big buildings, the animator isn't going to draw each individual window. They're going to draw like three windows and then four over here and then another two, but it gives the illusion that that building is filled with windows because your eye just kind of fills in the rest of the blanks. Um, it didn't work. So with I school. do that a lot. What's that? It didn't work with school for me. I, I figured if I showed up showed up for half of my college classes, that teacher would think I was always there. It didn't work. <laughs> I got well, that just means that means your teacher's perception as well. <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of have some fun with the placement. They don't all have to be uh, the exact same size, but. Uh, Again, just kind of play around with it. And then Art, if you want to zoom in again yeah. on my, I'll just kind of show what I mean with the placement. That one. Yeah. So I'm just kind of dotting them on there. Little windows. And then because I kind of dryly put in the highlight, as the windows kind of fade away into the gray that's behind it, it just it gives all the more the illusion that there's much more going on back there. But again, you don't you don't want to overdo it, and it starts looking like a polka dot. Some windows are going to be taller, larger, longer. They're not all going to be the same. You want that variance in there. Just keep it interesting as you're looking at it. Um, Dead Boy had mom at the front of the list because she had COVID earlier on, so they didn't want her to get COVID 2.0. Yeah. That's good. The eyes are kind of the easiest scenes to screw around with, which is both good and bad. The eyes. Oh, I see what you're saying. I think it's easier to kind of, as you're as you're doing it, kind of screwing around with people's eyes. <laughs> uh, Valerie, hi. Ah, uh, Valerie's Hello. here. Are you painting, Valerie? Wow. Speaking of Harry Potter, I yeah. was so sad to have missed uh, the deck building game from last week's. Um, oh yeah. Tabletop for two. Um. 
So I need to watch that. I was mm -hmm. super busy last week and wasn't able to, unfortunately. Because that's a game I wanted to. I wanted to see how it was played. And then, of course, busy again today. I didn't get to watch today. That's a fun one. Plus, I just, I love watching Danny playing Val. It's like so cute. Is that the same Valerie? Am I thinking of the same person? Yeah, yes, it's the same Val. <laughs> okay, good. It's just me insinuating, of course. Yeah, I love watching it too, Val. My husband doesn't really love um, playing some of the more in-depth board games, so I watch vicariously through the two of you. done. My little windows. A little bit of everywhere. It's pretty good. You can always go back and add on more windows if you want. But I like it. It's good. Hi, babe. What's up? My God, that's all of our channels for $35 a month. Slate TV. Dang. Can you guys hear him? Yes. I love it. He's whispering, like <laughs> telling me how excited he is about the cable. Come say hi. I talk about you like every day. This is Jared. Hello. And that was Jared. And he's gone. He's done. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks, babe. So I'll let you know all about it. I gotta go down and watch my housewives. Okay. Oh, that's all. He just wanted a cable so he could watch the real housewives. <laughs> That's all it is. Danny says his whispering is not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we only get VH1, which means we can watch RuPaul's Drag Race on Friday night. Oh, well, I get RuPaul's Drag Race, so that's fine. He gets Housewives, I get Drag Race. Everything's good. <laughs> he was speaking parcel tongue. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, I love it. Um, he sounds so breathy. He is. He's my like breathless Mahoney. Sooner or later. Oh, anyway. um, Dick Tracy around, reference, if anyone's seen it. The fun's about to start. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Reed says, oh my God, holy shit. Hello, Jared is, oh, Jared is gorgeous. Thank you. He's, <laughs> he's ridiculously handsome. I got very lucky. Um, he's so distracting and breathy, yeah. Okay, anyway, so I've got my building there, got my mountains. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start building out, um, yes, but it's Mahoney. If you haven't seen Dick Tracy, you got to see it. It's lovely in all its ridiculousness. Whoa. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is that more applause for Jared? Oh, nope. That was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna start to build out um, like our greenery around um, around all this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a green, kind of a, a mid-range green, maybe a little bit darker. Uh, this is a phthalo green, so it has a little bit of a blue hue to it, but as long as you have a basic green, it'll be fine because you can always lighten it and darken it as we go. And I'm going to use my large brush here. I'm gonna let my castle dry for a little bit and come back to it in a little while. 
I'm gonna take this green on my large size brush and I'm gonna build out my mountains. I'm gonna go a little bit higher than this mountain here, just a touch higher. And it's going to slope down and it's actually going to cross the horizon line and end right about here, right about there. So coming up here, Slip down. And it's going to stop right there. So by crossing the horizon line here, we're actually going to create a little bit of a, of a cove shape because the water is going to sit inside that area there. And normally what we would do is create a straight line across to create this mountain. But you can see up in the sample, it's kind of curved a little bit. So it's going to give us the illusion of uh, distance as it gets a little bit closer to us. So we're putting that curve a little bit over. It's very, very slight and subtle. And then I'm gonna fill that in with green. If you see a little bit of your purple uh, purple mountain underneath that, that's okay, because we're gonna layer on top of this with some darker green. Uh, you can do some black on top of it too, if you don't have a darker green. But we're gonna layer on top of this, these closer mountains to give some texture and a little bit of definition to them. Uh, Corey says, what color? Gray, blue? Oh, green. Uh, this is a green. This is a greeny blue, or actually, rather, it's a bluey green. If that makes sense, it's more green than blue. It's got a little touch of blue to it. Um, but again, it'd be fine if you've just got a standard green as your base. You can add a little bit, of t a little touch of blue if you want. Okay, so there's one. Um, Reed says, art is good at soundboards. I am. He is. Uh, Valerie says, this is like watching magic for me. I've never understood how you get from point A to point B. I'm glad you're liking it. That's um, that's what it's all about for me. I I love um, I love that being able to do this with you guys and, and showing you like step by step how to break it down so that you feel like you can do it yourself. Um, and if you're so empowered, please feel free to watch this video again next time when you got some art supplies and give it a try or um, even better take a look at old uh, older videos that we've done we've got a whole ton of um, other paintings we do this every week every monday all right so i let my castle dry a bit now what we're going to do because hogwarts is sitting on top of a mountain right um, we're going to build out our, our mountain just at the base of Hogwarts. It's kind of blend into it a little bit. So I'm going to start here on this far left edge of my castle. I'm just going to tap in some green and then just kind of let it slope. Try to find like a natural sloping point. We want it to end somewhere around here. So just let it kind of slope downward. Find a good spot for it to end. Again, you want it to end lower than this point here because we're trying to create that um, idea of distance, right? Somewhere around there is pretty good. Speaking of magic, I don't know if yeah. mainly for Val, but um, if you guys haven't watched In and of Itself on Hulu, uh, you guys really should. No, did you mention that before? I think I did, yeah. Because Amber and I saw it live in New York. And it is, they, they, find, they released the rec uh, recording of it on Hulu currently. And I think Valerie, if you haven't heard of it or haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. I think you really like it. I want, uh, to see, I want to see that. I totally forgot to check that out. It was like- In and of itself, right? In and of itself, yeah. And I, I've been a, like a magic nerd since I was a kid. And this left me yeah. like, it was, yeah, it blew me away. I love magic. Um, there's also uh, Justin Willman who uh, he used to host Cake Wars on um, the Cooking Cooking Network. 
um, but he's uh, just a magician who hosts. Um, shoot, what's it called? It's on Netflix. Mus magic for Magic for Humans. Magic for Humans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, he hosts a live show That's right. on Zoom. He's been doing that and recently. It's, it's so really good. good. Yeah, Jared and I have seen like two or three of them. Love it. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, uh, Dead Valsas. boy. What is that? Uh, Val says, "What is that?" Oh, oh, there she got it. It's it's oh, it's okay. a one man show. It's really good. And then, yeah. But it blew my mind. Um, and then Dead Boy, Bob Ross is definitely my inspiration. I, he he made art seem feasible for me, and so I take that lead and hope to do the same for everyone else. Everyone should have fun and just try it. Um, so you see, I've got this slope here, and then what I'm doing now is I'm kind of tapping the green along the bottom edge of my castle, imagining that it's kind of growing up some of the buildings, it's blending in with the mountain. And I'm not covering up all of it, but I am kind of building it in between each of the buildings. So if I'm seeing if I'm seeing kind of a, a shadowy area, I'm adding a little bit more green up there. If there's a little lighter area, I'm bringing down the green, but I really kind of want it to blend in as best we can. So I'm just lightly tapping that along the bottom edge of my castle. So it kind of looks like it's seamlessly built into it. And then, oh yeah. No, go ahead, finish your thought. I was just saying, I'm gonna fill this in with green, um, but before I do, I'm gonna draw out this kind of bottom cove area. Down here, you can see up in the sample, it's got like a, a little kind of flowy, um, organic shape to it. So I'm just going to follow that. Starting with this corner here, think horizontal when you're doing this. And start small. You can always add more if you need to. But I'm just creating kind of these little curved shapes that this mountain sits on before it goes off into the far right edge there. And I'm gonna fill in the rest of that mountain with green. Go ahead, Art, we were gonna check in on the Check Discord. the Discord, there's Amber. Yeah. Amber, that's <laughs> so good. And then we got- Oh, I love that. We got Danny over here. Nice. I love I'm the wrong. detail in the castle. There's Ryan over here. Ryan's always knocking it out. I love it on the easel too. Hi, Ryan. And just the back of Connie's head. Oh, there she is. Moved up. Hi, back of Connie. Hi. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. That was great. The detail on that is amazing, Connie. Really well done. Awesome. Love it. This is the kind of painting too where I I'll often go back into it. And I'll add little details, details in, yeah, yeah. in the castle, like maybe um, maybe little hints of color, or maybe there's an owl floating around there or something. All right, so I'm tapping this in, filling in the rest of the screen here. And I mentioned as you're doing this, start small because you can always make adjustments with uh, shapes like this. If you start smaller, you can build on them little by little to nothing. adjust it. <laughs> Did you say nothing? <laughs> I dropped my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I always do that too when I like drop something or make a sound. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. What? If you get a chance to deny it before anyone says anything, you're good I to just go. watched Connie unlock her phone and now I know her password, her passcode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 and then lastly, with the same green, 
I'm going to create the foreground here. This is going to start <laughs> over on this side and kind of overlap a majority of this bottom edge of the blue. And it's going to come up here too, but it's not going to close up this blue right here. I'm going to keep it lower. And I'm really tapping this on, keeping it light and loose. This is going to be our closest foliage. So if it's a little bit rougher along that top edge, it's not a solid line, that's okay. It's going to give the illusion that there's uh, actual foliage there. So you can see it's getting a little bit loose up front. There's a little more detail up here because these plants are closer to us than all the plants back there. And then I'm going to fill the rest in with green. When you're doing actions like this, when you're tapping, make sure that you uh, tilt your brush, you twist it a little bit just so that you're not getting the same kind of stamp motion like tap, 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 so it doesn't look the same every time. Twist it, turn it, bump it, smack it. Like, keep it different. Um, I know, Valerie, Terrence, it, um, the detail on Connie's was really good. They're all great, really. I was worried about this one, to be honest. This is one that, like I said before, it looks much more difficult when you when you first take a look at it, but then when you just break it down little by little, it's not too bad. <laughs> so that's a one an, an hour and a half me. An hour and a half ago me. <laughs> You've been busy. You've been running a show. All right, so we've got our green base there. Now what we're gonna do is layer on in the green areas some darker tones and some lighter tones and then bring back some of the green where we need to. So I'm gonna to continue to use this larger brush. And let's see, that was the phthalo green. Let me get a darker green. First, let me throw all my paints on the ground. <laughs> Step one. <laughs> Step one. Let's see, this emerald might be a little bit darker. Nope, that is not at all. All right, we'll do deep green. That'll be good. Um, if you don't have varied, oh yeah, there we go. If you don't have varied shades of green, you can always just add a tiny tap of black to your green, stir it around a bit, and then use that. It'll work the same. Just take it light as you do it. You don't want to overdo it. Okay, so I've got this slightly darker green on here. And what I'm going to do, similar to what I have down here along this bottom edge, I'm just tapping that into my green areas. And I'm going to do this across all of the green. So we're taking away some of that solid uh, middle green and adding some shadow. And we're just keeping it really light and organic. Now also make sure when you're doing the shape up here and the shape over here, you're not crossing over the lines. You do want to keep that nice and sharp because it's in the background. You want to keep those shapes pretty well defined. If it's a little bit over, that's okay. You can have a little bit of hazy. Maybe there's like a, a tree or a bush that's overhanging, but you don't want to do too much of it. You want to keep it pretty tight. And you don't want to cover up all of your green with this dark green. So don't overdo it too soon. And then what I'm going to do is go in with some lighter green. This is a sap green. It's a little more of a yellow green rather than a blue green. So I'm going to take a little tap of this and layer that right on top. So 
in this green foliage area, I actually have three different tones of green, a, a light, a medium, and a dark, and it just creates all the more uh, texture. I will be right back. Okay. I mean, to leave you zoomed in or zoomed out? Uh, you can go ahead and zoom to keep it zoomed in. That's fine. So it's looking pretty dark there. What I might do is I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. Okay. Oh, that's a very bright yellow. Let's try and light green. I don't want to go too lemony with it. There we go. I want to take this light green. So I'm actually going to use four different tones of green. But again, play with it as you're doing it. You're going to get the feel. Yeah, that's better. There we go. You really want it to be pretty distinct. You want to see those pops of, of light and dark along that middle range. Because you can imagine each one of these little pops of this yellow green is a highlight on top of a tree or something like that, right? And as you're doing this, if you find that you have a little too much of the dark or of the light, you can always go back and kind of balance it out. You can add a little more dark, you can add a little bit more light. Just kind of play around with it. You'll get it as you're building it out. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to this area here and I'm gonna start with my deep green, I'll start with my darker tone to layer on. Tap that around first. And just tap that in. And you can see I'm just moving really quickly with it because I don't want to overthink the placement. I really just want this to have kind of organic flow. And then I'm going to skip the sap green this time. I'm going to go right into my light, light green. I think I liked the light green better than the sap green. It's just a little touch lighter. <laughs> Do all of it. Tap that around. And then really letting that build up. Now, if you're feeling um, that you really like this technique and you're having some fun with it, you can take it a little extra step and with a smaller brush and with an even smaller amount of paint, uh, maybe it's springtime in Hogwarts, you can add um, like a pop of red. If you add some red paint and just kind of tap in some red in there, here and there. Um, or if you want to do a snowy scene, you can start with the same kind of base, maybe blue it out a little bit more than green. And then you can take white and just tap on white along the base and kind of create little snow hills, a little bit of white on there. You can really use this as a base for any Hogwarts themed painting and make it any season you want to. It's totally up to you. Um, this is going to be a, um, an early spring scene for me. So it's still a little cloudy, still rainy, flowers haven't kicked up yet. And then here, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to add a little touch of the deep green. Although, because this is our foreground, 
I don't want it to be too dark. So my application of the deep green is going to be just a touch lighter than in these two panels that I did here. I actually want it to be a little bit lighter. And that's just so we can see a bit more uh, detail these textures that are right down there. So there's my dark tone. We go back in again with the light green. And as I mentioned before, you can be a little heavier with the light here, with the light green because this is in our foreground and we're gonna see a little bit more definition of these textures. The light's not gonna blend in as much as it did um, in our backgrounds back there. We're gonna see more pops of that light green because this hillside is closer up to us. Check in on the, on the Discord. Yeah, let's take a look, see how everyone's see. doing. Uh, there's Amber. Amber, look at your little plants, I love it. Actually, it's so me. cute. I'm gonna actually make this bigger. There we go. Nice. Ooh, Amber's doing, uh, she's got a brush that she's using. A texture over here. Yeah, a nice textured brush, that's a great idea. Um, I would also, too, try playing with the opacity, too, when you're doing the texture brushes and see if you can oh, get yeah. different layers. A dry brush. Yeah, that's great. I love that. And Ryan's doing the... Oh, he walked away. <laughs> there he is. And there's Connie. She's waiting for us. But we're so waiting good. for her because it's delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's beautiful. Looks so good. I love it. I have to go find Danny. Oh, there's Danny. And there's Danny. Nice. Nice work, gang. It's a Photoshop. Really well done. Very cool. Now also, as, you, as you're looking through, um, if you find that you're getting some, some interesting shapes here that maybe aren't quite looking so islandy, just remember you want to think horizontal. Even though they have a little bit of a curve to them, you're still getting a horizontal plane with each of these shapes. And that's what helps to kind of create the illusion of water coming up to land. So if you need to, you can add a little bit more green and kind of line it up a little bit oh, to bring it out. Uh, Reed says, I put mine up. I was messing with different mediums as well, but my nib is acting up. I need to order a new one. Dang nib. Stupid nib. All right, so there is Hogwarts. I'm pretty happy with it. It's like fun. Um, now you can add little details to it too. So remember up there, I kind of screwed up and added, um, <laughs> I stuck my finger in it on accident. <laughs> so I've got a little black dab, dab up there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that little black dab and I'm going to take some white with my small paintbrush, my little one. And I think we need a little head wig up there. So I'm going to use that as my base. So I'm 
just paint two little wings. It doesn't have to be super detailed. It's just a little tap of paint where uh, Hedwig a uh, little delivery it's up there in the sky. Or maybe you have some gold paint. You could paint uh, the snitch flying away. Maybe it escaped the latest uh, uh, Quidditch match. Dead boy. Yes, rewatch this one. You can always rewind it, right? Rewatch it. You can always come back. All right. So now I'm I'm gonna paint this little uh, this little sedan over here, the Weasley's car. Now I know nothing about cars, so please <laughs> um, please bear with me if this car ends up not looking very much like a car. I'm gonna take this blue. I think I'm, I'm using the same cerulean blue that I've been using today. And I'm gonna try to draw or try to paint a car. I'm gonna paint it up here. I think in the sample, it's actually sitting on top of the mountain, but I don't want it to blend in too much with the mountain. I actually want it to stand out a bit. So I'm gonna paint it just above. So I'm gonna start with a no, the wrong thing. Angled rectangle. Everything's just shapes, right? That's all it is. And then on top of that rectangle, I'm going to paint the top of the car little lines the top and then I'm gonna paint two lines inside one for the windshield and then one for the side of the car there. okay it's looking kind of car like you know, it's funny, whenever I painted cars as a kid, um, they always ended up looking like, um, did you ever watch Doug on Nickelodeon? Yeah. You know how their cars were like round bubbles? Uh -huh. On like, that, that's what my cars always looked like. They just looked like round bubbles. Okay, so there's, there's the base of the car there, and then I'll just add little, um, yeah, they look like scoops of mashed potato, totally. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of black paint, and I'm going to do the tires. This car has four tires, like most cars do. <laughs> so bad. Quail Boy, yes! The Adventures of Quail Boy, and what was Porkchop's character? He's like... Um, Sidekick. Oh no, remember. he was Quail Man. Doug was Quail Man. Quail Man. And Pork Chop was um, I can't remember. Oh well, I loved Doug. Doug was a lot of fun until Disney bought Doug, and then it wasn't so fun. It was kind of weird. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna add my little tires on there. Black paint. Yeah, once. Once Doug went from a Nicktoon to a Saturday morning Disney cartoon, something changed, and I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was. You know, it's so funny when we do this every week, but uh, we didn't talk about Harry Potter like at all this week. We always end up talking about everything but what we're painting. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, because next time we'll do a Star Wars themed painting and all we'll talk about is Harry Potter. It all evens out. Okay, that's pretty cute. That's not bad. My tire's on there, and then I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna put two little dots of black. One dot, 
So you don't. That's where my headlights are going to be. Fingers crossed. All right, so I've got two little dots of black. And then what I'm going to do is clean off my brush really well and grab the white paint. The white paint, not the parchment paint. Which way is the car facing? Towards the castle? I have the car facing toward the castle. Okay. It's hard to tell because it's it's like an angle and it's not a very detailed painting of a car. And then um, I've got some white paint. I'm actually going to get a little bit more. I'm going to paint a small white dot on the right of those small black dots that I just painted. So I'm going to create a headlight with a little bit of a shadow on it. Yes, it's a car. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. It, it's a little more boxy than than I wanted, but whatever. It's a car. We know what it's doing. The glitch I thought was on the original painting was the car. Oh, <laughs> just that little flicker there. Um, Dead Boy says, let's be honest, sometimes Disney is the animation version of Walmart. You're allowed to love you're allowed to love it and hate it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's a Oh, I told you we started doing our podcast, right? Mm hmm Me and Jared. Um Yeah, you can find us at Mr. and Mrs. Podcast. Because he does it in drag. Podcast and drag. Not that you can tell. Um <laughs> But yeah, we're, we've got a Disney episode coming up where we're, we're just talking about how much we love and hate it at the same time. <laughs> um, but Reed, I'm, I'm happy that you were happy with what you made. I'm happy with what I made too. This is a cool one. And Reed, I'm also glad that you tried it because I know you said you weren't going to, but I'm glad that you did it anyway. You gotta put yourself out there. Um, for those of you who did paint with us today, share with us on Perception Paints on the Discord. It'd be great. Love seeing everyone's work on there. Um, and if you're doing stuff that's not this and just want to share the artwork that you're doing, share it. Yeah. I'd love to see it. It's fun to take a look at everyone's work. Um, but other than that, ta-da, it's yeah. magic. And we learned today that you can't watch the YouTube video at the same time that we're doing the show. No, but we figured it out. It's, we figured it out, now we know. It's all good. Um, hey, Art, are we still doing the, um, the push for partner, right? Yeah, that's still going on, you guys. Uh, we still... Need you. We still want you there. Uh, Twitch did see us, and they still they want more from us. So we gotta keep doing it. Um, so uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday nights, seven, seven thirty, and seven thirty. Uh, please be there. We're gonna be. Uh, yeah, you guys know the thing. We'll be doing it. We still got a little ball to go. Probably another, maybe another month or so to go, and hopefully we'll get it. Um, we actually just found out one of our friends got partnered. Remember Zan? Yeah. Zan just became a partner. Nice. Nice partner, yeah. So, um, Very cool. Yeah, so please do come. Tomorrow is at 7 p.m. Uh, Solon's Legacy. Uh, please join us. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a good show. Uh, and then Wednesday, we're Perception Check. And then Thursday, Trash Piece, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, that's it. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining me. It was fun, as always. Art, lovely to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, well, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Oh wait, hold on. Dead boy says Robert Art. I often tell Danny and Val that, but this Monday, but uh, how I often tell Danny and Val this, but Mondays are fast becoming one of my favorite days because it's chill and fun conversation with y'all. Oh, Patreon, Patreon, please do. Thank if you. any, if any of this is worth at least a dollar to you, please join our Patreon. Um, uh, it really helps us to kind of a, a little bump towards our shows so we can keep making shows we can pay for rent we can do all that stuff and if you join at oh, our 15 yeah. level at 15 dollar level uh you get it automatically you'll get a, a a patreon exclusive pin and every three months you will be getting a automatic pin a new pin this pin coming up it's already on order it's coming from china so at some point in the next couple of weeks is the kawaii uh chunk pin uh which everybody who has been here has been a patron for at least three months will automatically just get one you send out That's some pins sweet. yes read h cooper if you have not gotten your pin your your first pin contact me and let me know uh we are missing a, we're still missing a lot of addresses on patreon i don't have your address so i can't send them to you like i only sent i sent less than half of them um some people were just like family stuff they didn't really care they just donated 
But uh, if you want Japan and you have not gone it, let me know. Send me a message on Discord. Send me a private message on Discord and we'll figure it out. Uh, there is a little weirdness with uh, getting the addresses from from Patreon. You have to put in your address and then you have to make it visible to us. So it's like two steps. So uh, okay. your address is on there. Okay, so I will I will be checking pins pretty in the next week or so. I'll be sending I'll send out another batch to make sure that I caught everybody. I love that you guys are doing that. That's easy. If you got a buck, throw it to Patreon. Yeah. Run it every month. That's nice. Cool. I'll make sure you get yours, Swedish Cooper. I'll make sure that I get sent out soon. Everybody have a good night. See you guys later. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you next week.